Okay, back to how to make paths in vector.com. So I was showing you the pin tool, and then I was showing you, if you double click on it, you can see all the anchor points. If you just click on it once, you get kind of all the large transform features. And if you double click on it, you can individually move and adjust the anchor points. And it doesn't matter how you've made the anchor points, whether you've made them with the pen tool or whether you're modifying a shape. But one of those tools are these corner tools, which are pretty nice, because they'll just even a curve out equally on each side of the anchor point you plotted. There are a lot of designers who just always draw their vectors as straight line polygons first, and then just place them such that all they ever need to use to curve it is these corner tools, and it gives kind of a nice even quality to everything instead of freehanding any of their curves. And you know what? I might try that. Now there is a limit to those tools, and the limit is it can only curve to the next anchor point. So if you need to get rid of an anchor point, or if you need to adjust its curves, you can double click it. So double click on the, the thing and then double click on the anchor point and it will change it from being a straight point to being curves with handles that you can adjust. And if you hold down command, you can adjust those handles individually. So the reason vectors are so unintuitive is because you never really get exactly what you want on the first try. You have to modify and modify and modify. But that's why they can be so clean and so easily controlled. And just the more modification you add, the more control you'll have over that final product. Because I'm not trying to match my sketch exactly. I'm trying to get something that's better than it as much as possible. And I can always add an anchor point and make that into a curve if I want to. Okay, so now I'm pretty happy with this shape. It's just a small part of my overall logo, but I'm going to click it once so I see the big properties. And then I'm going to swap it so that it's filled with black and that the border is turned off. And then if I want to see what that looks like without my sketch underneath it, I just turn the eyeball off on my sketch layer and I can do command minus to zoom out. So this is what I've done so far. Now let's turn my sketch back on. Let's tackle the next wing. And what tool am I going to use? There's no shape that makes that easy to modify, though for yours there might be, right? But I'm just going to use that pen tool, and I'm going to start. And if I want a little curve, I'll drag and drop. And then I'll drag and drop to get my next curve. Oh, and then sometimes I have to hold down spacebar and to get out there. And then my next one and curve. My next one. Next one and curve. Do my next. So how can you use this in the most effective way so you don't end up with like really wild shapes? This is going to be the problem most of you have. Problem I always have. Because this is close, but it's not quite right. It might even be better, actually. Let's see.
Nah, it's it's too majestic a wing. So instead, I can do Command Z, Command Z, you know. So how can you use the pen tool to get exactly the shape you want and be really disciplined about it? This is how within vector.com. You start, and when you want a curve, you just take your ending point and you click and drag. But then before you make your next shape, you grab the handle and you hold down Command and you drag that handle back to its space. So that gives you a straight again. Then you go out and you click and drag and you make your next curve. And if you overshot it, this is what I kind of like about Pixlr, is once you've clicked, you can then grab the handle, hold down Command, and change the handle on either side. So if I hold down Command, I can adjust this one. And if it's not quite the curve I need, I can actually grab the anchor point and move it until it is the curve I need. And then I move on to the next. And if I don't want that to continue that curve, I'm going to make my window a little bit bigger here. You can also use your scroll wheel on your mouse to move around. Uh, what I'm going to do is hold down Command and click on this handle and move that back so I'm back to a straight. And that allows me to do my next curve in a way that's really controlled without overshooting it. Then I hold down Command and I grab the handle and I go back to the anchor. And now maybe I just do a straight to my next curve. Maybe a straight and a straight. Sounds like I'm at a conservative conference. All these straights. We get plenty of curves in there too. Then I hold down command and I drag that handle back. Another straight. Another straight. Click and drag for the curve. So this will take practice. But it is all controllable. And with discipline you can get the exact shape you want really kind of the first time around. And if not, you can modify it. Now where I couldn't modify it to get exactly right, or where I couldn't do it in the first time around, was where I had to close the path. But now if I double click on it, I can get to that anchor point, and I can control both sides of that curve by holding down Command. And I can even move the anchor point, so I get it exactly where I want it. Double click, I can see all the anchor points. And the only ones that will give me the cornering options are the ones that are straight. So if I wanted to curve those out a little bit, I might just do it a little bit. Now, what vexes me when I do this is when you get like a curve going into a straight like here and you want that to be smoother. And there is no smooth tool like there is in Illustrator. So what I do is I double click and then I click on the anchor points that are bothering me and I hold down command. Oops. Don't double click, just hold down command. And then you can adjust the curve and adjust the placement of just that anchor. So I'm going to straighten it out. And then I can hold down command on this one. And I can adjust there we go. That anchor. I can adjust these curves individually if I'm holding down command. And that's going to straighten them out. 
And then that allows me more control over these individual curves. So they don't look so strange or off. All right, so once I'm happy with that wing, what do I do? I click on that path, and I turn off its border, and I turn on its black fill. And I can always rotate it. I can do whatever I want. If I want this to wrap around this shape a little bit better, then I can add anchor points if needed, and then move them in, and then adjust their curves. And again, if you hold down Command, you can adjust the curve on each side of each anchor point. And you can move your other ones around. So holding down Command while you hit an anchor gives you a lot of opportunity. And then sometimes things like this will happen. You have to double click. That's because you have an extra curve in there you don't want. You hold down Command. And you bring it back, extra curve I don't want, hold down command, and I can kind of control it. Command and control. And if you double click it, you can always just turn it back to straight so that you can try it again, right? And there's always command Z. Now holding down command gives you individual control. That is the important thing. There we go. To get what you want. They don't need to be absolutely perfect. There are a lot of professional logos that have little wonkiness in them sometimes. Okay, if I want to save my work, it's going to automatically be saved on my home page because I, I signed in. So when I open it, you know, it remembers what I did. But I can also export it. There's no save, but you can export. And the way you want to export it is as a vector file. A VECTR file. So when you download that, huh, not as an SVG, as a vector, is it not going to allow me to do it anymore? Uh oh. That's annoying. That's a new limit. I guess you need to be a, a premium VIP to save it as something other than an SVG. But your SVG will also work. The problem is with your SVG, it's just it's better to make it just sign in with an account. Is your SVG will have your um your sketch, because I have it turned on, embedded into it. So this is what my SVG looks like. And it is separated out. This automatically opens an Illustrator. But, yeah, it's not the worst thing in the world. So we are no longer able to save as a vector file. But that's okay. So instead, just make sure you log in with your your email so that it will remember your progress on the home page. Problem with freeware is it keeps changing. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, good. I was worried there. It might, it might just make us pay for something eventually. So the other tool, if we go to the user guide and we look at drawing paths part two, it will talk you through doing curves. And we always want to close our paths because it's hard to pick them up after we've stopped them if they aren't closed. 